Nate's Nate Carr and Iowa's Jim Zaleski put on quite a performance. Watch Nate try to go up a weight class. 158 pounds, Jim Zaleski, who I'm sure when he came to Ames did not expect to wrestle Nate Carr tonight. But he'll be ready. The second ranked 158 pounder, and there, this ought to be a strong match. Carr, second ranked at 150. Zaleski, second ranked at 58. Very intense people. A lot of activity going on out here. No points. The fans have gotten into this match, too. They see the activity that's going on, and they want to be a part of it. Both of them rank second in the nation. Carr second at the 150-pound class, where he's defending the 150-pound uh, national title. And, of course, Zaleski is ranked second at this particular weight class, 158. Where he was fifth last year in the national. Last year, we saw... Inside. Jim Zaleski defeat the two-time national champion Randy Ricky Stewart of Oklahoma State at 158 pounds. Now the problem here is that Nate Carr is actually out of bounds. Center. Although the supporting parts of Zaleski were in bounds and uh, consequently... Now, so, let's listen to the referee I him, here. I told him. Right He's got to let him in. I know. All right, there's nothing there. It's my timeout. The concern there was the simple fact that uh, some people might have wondered why was Carr not coming back in. The point was that Zaleski was not allowing him to return. Consequently, that's the reason for the uh, concern. And, of course, the next time that happens, I'm sure you'll see a warning for stalling. And this would be, in this case, against Zaleski for not allowing Carr to return to the mat. Harold Nichols was complaining that he couldn't get back in, and just after he left, Dan Gable complained that uh, Nate could have come in if he wanted to. Two minutes left, first period. Carr against Zaleski. It was an interesting moment at the weigh-in today when Nate Carr got on the scales. They were weighing each other out. They were weighing out of order. So you didn't know where Nate was weighing in, and he got on the scales, and it went up to 158. And it was a bit of a surprise in the room. Right now, both boys uh, are looking for openings, but uh, nothing so far. No, and a half. no shots by either competitor. A minute and a half gone and to go. First period. Carr. Trying to make a move, and he oh, couldn't do it, and he's on his back. back. Zaleski has Carr in a very, very bad position with a minute and 18, and Carr is bridging violently here he's to got, avoid being pinned. He's got, he's got a five-point move. There's no question about it. It would appear that Carr is out of the danger immediately of being pinned, but he had a five-point move for and Zaleski. He may, and he may score more back points. He's got that arm bar in there pretty tough. And he's got that near leg senior putting a lot of pressure on him, keeping his hips under control. He's riding car tough at this point. We'd like to get him tipped for some more back points. He's, he's counting them. He's got, he's got two more. And what a big lead Zaleski's piled up. The Iowa fans in the crowd going crazy because Nate Carr can't do anything down there. Two more. And he's going to get two more here. He's got him in that Turk, and he's really putting it on him here. He sure is, without question. He's got a commanding lead at this point, and he's working tough physically on top. Two more. It's 9 to 0 in favor of Jimmy Zaleski. Boy, what a first period he has. And look at that Iowa bench. Choice here. There's Dan Gable. Let's Three look at it. Is. Notice Carr tries to come around with a, with a, uh, with a uh, head and uh, near leg, but uh, boy, a body press, a body throw by Zaleski oh. put him in Short trouble right now for a five-point move, and he picked up two more successive near fall situations. He leads 9-0 now. Well, I'll tell you, he got pinned. Jim Zaleski pancaked him in a hurry. And it's uh, an escape for Zaleski, makes it 10 to nothing. And he comes in on a double, and he's going to put it, look like maybe he's going to put Carr down for two more. 
No points. Well, obviously, Nate Carr, who is embarrassed to be down by 10 here after going up to 158, is going to have to pull something out of the hat here. That's right. I said 9 to 1 a moment ago, and, and, and I was thinking that uh, Carr was down the other way around. It's 10 0, Zaleski out in front. 10 to nothing. Zaleski in on the leg. Uh, Carr got in behind, but no mat points, no points. Standing position, he must take him to the mat under, uh, with normal reaction time in order to score the two. Iowa looks just as tough as they can be here tonight in this big showdown at Hilton Coliseum between the number one ranked Hawks and the number three ranked Cyclones. Well, at this point, uh, Zaleski uh, uh, leads 10 0, but you uh, must remember that Carr was on his back for the big part of that uh, uh, first period, and he's got to be uh, more tired than is Zaleski. Dan. He's got to do a lot of wrestling to make up 10 points. A warning was given there, too, as we, you may have heard, by referee Daryl Henry against Carr for backing out of bounds. One minute. 10 to nothing in favor of Jim Zaleski. A oh. takedown and seven near fall points in the first period. Now that five point move really made the difference. Uh, he caught uh, Nate in that uh, body press, the pancake maneuver. Uh, and right now it, it took a lot of sap, I'm sure, away from Carr and he caught him in two success more successive near fall points. And Nate's wrestling with a... There's the first takedown for Carr. It was a great deficit to overcome. One. It's one point intentional release. 11 to two. Nate's got to pour in the coals uh, at, at this point to pick up a lot of points. He's got a lot to pick up. He got this single leg, but it couldn't work it inbounds. There's Eddie Bannock. He'll be up at 177 against Perry Hummel. You can see Dan Gable and, and crew are very excited, really. Very intense, but he's got to be happy with the way the Hawks have gone. Got to be happy. Big move was for Iowa State to send Carr up to 158 against Celeste. But Jim turned the tables very quickly in that first period. And the strategy has not worked so far. Third period, 11 to 2, Zaleski. And in the second period, it was a difference of two and uh, two to well, one. It was two two actually in that period. And Zaleski, of course, because of all that time in the near fall uh, position where he had uh, car on his back, has riding time, minute 28 to eight seconds. Easy. Zaleski on top, and he's racking him up again. I don't believe. Yes, he yes, got, he got points. He has just managed to make that move to his heart's content. 13 well, he's, to he's two. He's wrestling tough on top. Uh, he's working Nate real tough. Easy, easy. In fact, he's got a superior decision going right now. He sure does. With riding to time. Two. Jim Zaleski, his brother Lenny, 111 to five at 142 over Randy Conrad. Mary Davis won at 18. Trezino over Otto at 26. Kerber upset Gibbons at 34, and boy did things turn. Car stands up, but Zaleski uh, picks him up and puts him to the mat. Car comes Go back ahead. up. There's your body lock. He puts Car back to the mat and on his shoulders for the three point. Near fall. He's got three, and there's the one point escape for Car. I'll tell you, 16 it's to three. two. One here at neutral. The last time I saw Nate behind this far, I believe, was uh, when he was a freshman wrestling against. Uh, Andy Ryan of Wisconsin, who was so good on his feet that he could take him down almost any time he wanted at that time. And here, boy, I'll tell you, this is the one that's still the Cyclone crowd. Well, Jim, Jim Zaleski is just uh, wrestling tremendously well tonight, and he's putting all of his moves together. I, I just don't think he could look much better. Oh, no, he really couldn't. Yeah, he's in there at a tough weight. You see, 16 to three is the score because of the uh, car escape. And the team score is 12 to 3. Some of the 14,500 people in Hilton Coliseum, which has been unusually quiet for an Iowa-Iowa State meet here because the way 
Iowa's wrestling. Iowa State hadn't been in it yet. Zaleski's been solid and powerful. Now Carr's in on the leg. Two. That's two. Came in after. That was two. It came in after. Two. Good boy takedown. He was in on Down. it. No question about it. 16 to 5. But it's still, because of the riding time situation, it's still uh, a six, potential uh, superior decision because of that. There it is. Now makes it what? 17 to 5. And Carr has to get the takedown in order to escape a superior decision against him. Which means five team points. Anything uh, difference of 12 or more. Sanchez. We're in the last 35 seconds. And it's an important move here that Carr can make. And that's something. Well, I'll tell you, Zaleski really wrestled tough here. And there's two more. And two more. He's got his superior. Well, I'll tell you what. Nate tried to get in there with that bear hug. I'll tell you that you can see here, I think, the difference between 150 and 158 well, pounds of two good wrestlers. He is Hart tries to body uh, lock throw himself, but uh, he got uh, off he his base, and of course, Zaleski right, kept the pressure down. on him and took the two himself. Not too many people are going to out muscle and Nate in that situation. But I'll tell you, Zaleski is tonight. This Zaleski is tough. He looks terrific. 19 to 5, and he's going to get a writing time point. When was the last time Nate Carr was. Gave up 20, and there it is, a big win for Jim Zaleski, 20 to five for Iowa in that match. In 1986, Marty Kissler became the outstanding wrestler of the NCAA tournament. But in this match, Mike Van Arsdale showed little respect. And why should he? He was an All-American himself. And now we're at 167. Number one ranked Marty Kissler, last year's 158 pound champion in the black for Iowa. Mike Van Arsdale, ranked number six, finished sixth last year in the NCAAs for Iowa State in the red. Van Arsdale team tends to be a big match wrestler. And this is a big match for him. So it'd be interesting to see how he adjusts to a, a guy like Kissler who's so solid on his defense and yet still has the offense. 16 to 3. Kistler is in on a single leg. He dropped that hip nicely to, to affect the defense. It's right when he breaks his left arm free, that's when he makes his offense. Kistler tends not to shoot from too far away. He'd rather get his hands on his opponent and come from in here. Get in close. And of course, Van Arsdale has some some freestyle experience, so with the range and height that he's got, he'd like to be in here real close. In fact, Ben Arsdale was uh, second in the World Junior Freestyle Tournament when he was just out of high school and won a national freestyle junior title. He likes it right here, in and underneath. And he's got to finish those moves. He got in there deep. It's hard to do that on a good athlete, and he has to finish that. Half a minute, half the first period is gone. A minute 30. Ben Arsdale trying to get it. But he caught it early, came back on a nice offense of his own. That, that concept of a counter attack really makes sense. More athletes should be able to do that. Kissler in the black. 19 and 1 this year. And Arsdale's 21 and 5. Second largest crowd in New League history. The largest is in the same arena. Well, what isn't working right now for either of these athletes, because they're they're still fresh, will probably work late in the match. Both of them. Bill Henning says, in effect, it's not working, man. Try something else. We haven't been able to get through the other man's defense. So it's kind of a standoff. Marty, 
We told you this is the second largest crowd. The largest one was in 1983, and it was only about 75 more people. I not much to choose between them, but officially this is the second largest, and it was also of course Iowa State and Iowa. Van Arsdale had a single leg at the end of the period, but it doesn't go anywhere. And Van Arsdale will get his choice. Here's the two assistants from Iowa, Keith Moreland and Mr. Johnson, watching intently. Van Arsdale takes down, he gets the choice. He's very effective down. He, he does a lot of turning action. You might call it switch or hip heisting, but he'll try to come up and then start to use that switch action. Can't do it in America because his arm's all tied up. There's the switch right there. And he's out. And our tail ahead, one to nothing. Drives those hips around so fast, it's hard for anybody to hold Ben Arsdale when he gets to his feet. He just does such a good job of turning the hips. There's a nice snap action. Kisser's got it going now. Finally, finally, Kisser caught up with him. That was a great flurry. Both athletes doing a nice job. Notice how Kisser, when, once he got him started, he didn't let Ben Arsdale off. He came right back. Oh, Ben Arsdale almost put, put himself on his back. He's trying to step behind Kistler's leg and, and rolling right there, but now he's got an arm taken away and he's in a tough spot. A minute to go. Trying to do is he's trying to come under the other arm and get that arm tied up behind his back. That's a chicken leg. Took advantage of that error. Uh-oh. A little bit too much on the elbow. It's potentially dangerous. I think Van Arsdale is taking a little time on that shoulder. Phil Henning, the referee, is out talking to Jim Gibbons who questioned what happened. Well, he said he didn't try to do it intentionally. Just It just slipped out. Kissler's intensity is so, so great. It's one of the reasons why he's so uh, successful. He doesn't lose his concentration. He leads two to one. And the calmness of the of the coaching staff there on the bench would indicate that they have a lot of confidence in their man's ability to, to remain cool. Ed Bannock told Van Arsdale to stand up third and uh, it's a perfect reversal for Van Arsdale. Give it that slip. Here he's, he's a legger on top. He can put a lot of pressure on a punt. He's got good length and good balance. Well, he tried to tilt Kissler, but couldn't get him, and it's 3-3 after the escape. Kissler will not let up on this. It's one thing Van Arsdale will have to make the adjustment to, is he's in a match for the full seven Oh, yeah. Minutes. Kissler a, will stay right after him. And we're only in the second period here. First period was scoreless. This one is 3-3. And Arsdale has been giving Kissler one of his better matches to this point. Now Kissler's in very nicely on a single leg. Keeps the wrist nicely and avoids the takedown. So Van Arsdale, Van Arsdale dodges a bullet, and it's 3-3. Kessler, Kessler gets his choice in the third period, and he wants to go down. This might be when, where Van Arsdale wants him because he tends to be pretty good on the top. 16 to 3, it's Iowa over Iowa State. Cyclones have only two draws and had a team point taken away for a little unsportsmanlike conduct at 126 pounds. And so it's now, rather than 16 4, 16 to 3. They tried to throw the leg too soon, but Kissler just caught it and threw it over his head. And so it's 4 3 after the escape. Kissler leads. Wouldn't surprise me to see Kistler take Van Arsdale down a couple of times here. Van Arsdale's tired, he won't be nearly as effective in this last period. Just trying to ward him off now. Van Arsdale uses his length pretty well in situations like that. He's been able to... There's, there's a penalty point. One point Kistler, stalling Van Arsdale. Five, three. That's and a take all the way on. Nice bars guard. Just as you suggested might happen. 
Well, Barsgar is a, is a move that they learned from the Russian. Watch how he has the leg. Now watch him come off with his right hand and block the outside leg and then drive his opponent over it. The man just can't move that post out away from him, so he gets the two points. So it's a very now, nice technique. It now uh, zipped from 3-3 to 7-3. to three. Kistler, as good wrestlers do, these Iowa wrestlers so often do, pile them up in the third period. You're going to see him. He's going to try to score some more. This is where Van Arsdale's good with that switch. He has to be careful of that now. That arm gets free. That's where he's dangerous. One minute, one. Minute to go. Seven to three. Kistler. Kistler was the national champion last year at 158 pounds. And the year before, he finished second. He's been the Big Ten champion twice. That's Jim Gibbons. He's learning something about uh, what it's going to take to catch this Iowa team this year because so far it's been a disappointing meet for Iowa State. They have fought well and, and bravely, I might add. And they've been in some of these matches. And they're, I think, getting the feel right now for what they have to do. Seven to four after the escape. The last time that Iowa State beat Iowa, Jim Gibbons won a national championship that year. Now the coach. Front headlock. Just for a second by Kistler. Kistler is dominating the match in the third period. He's taking away Van Arsdale's attempt to throw. He's still in the low level attack. Burnout, Van Arsdale just hasn't penetrated through Kistler's defense. Plus, uh, he's resting a little tired. He has no takedowns. He had a reversal in the second period and two escapes. But Kistler has owned the match from the beat. And so he wins it. He does have, he does have riding time. And so he wins. As expected, I guess you'd have to say, 19 to 3. And the happy crowd in Hawkeye Land gets up on a speech to cheer. Marty Kistler. The odds of winning All-American honors on four different occasions have to be high. But when the Hawks' Jim Heffernan and Cyclones' Tim Krieger got together in 1986, you had two wrestlers battling for that same lofty goal. And here we go with the other one and two man, Krieger against Heffernan. The Hawks have got it rolling now, and it's going to be up to Krieger to get Iowa State back in, in the momentum again, in the momentum. In Iowa City, Krieger pushed a good deal. Heffernan was not terribly um, aggressive, but he is here. Boy, he hit in there deep on that one, didn't he? <laughs> as soon as you say it, as soon as you say it, it comes back like a like a uh, plague against you, doesn't it? Heffernan with Krieger on the bottom. That was a slick move by the Iowa All-American, ranked number one. Well, he started with it right away. Last time, as you say, he was a little apprehensive. Now, he's pretty tough. He's got that leg stuck inside. He's got the arm up around the head and under the other arm. It does not look like much, but I'll tell you, you can get pinned with that thing. I was thinking, he just hits him deep, catches him so off guard that he just drives right on through. Just a straight single, high above the five for the takedown. And Iowa has begun to Dominating these matches a little bit here now. Two to one is the score. Heffernan after the escape still leads by one. But we'll see if Heffernan keeps that offense. Last time, as you said, uh, Krieger was really the pusher, and Heffernan wrestled a little apprehensive. Uh, this time he opened up with the shot, but it's a long match. And we'll see if he can keep that momentum, keep that attitude it's that I'm, I'm the number one ranked guy and I can do this. Nine to five. It's Iowa State over Iowa. Circle the back to the middle, guys. Circle score the that middle. Iowa lost there was one point deducted for unsportsmanlike conduct after Kevin Dresser in happiness threw his, threw his um, head gear. <laughs> yeah, and he just pitched it over to the side, but he did it, uh, you know, because he was excited, not because he was angry. Still, it's the rule is the rule. If he'd have just left it lay there and picked it up, and maybe thrown it in the air and caught it himself uh, in his joy, but when you pick it up and start to pitch it around, who's to say the next one doesn't go all the way up into the bleachers? Krieger. In the red, 
for Iowa State. Heffernan in the black of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Let's go back. Hilton Coliseum and A. Hilton, you're just tying up. Period. You're just tying up. Two to one. Heffernan got a takedown, and Krieger has the escape. Now, again, Doug, here's a guy, Krieger, from Iowa State, that's so dangerous with hips. I was talking about Randall being dangerous with his hips. Here's another guy that's the same way. Sometimes when you get him, you really don't have him because he's got that great balance and that ability to change 90 degrees, so really sometimes 180 if you're coming into him with enough force, and those hips will hurt you. So, you know, we haven't seen all of that yet. We really haven't had an opportunity to witness it you know, on our show, but he's a dangerous young wrestler because he's got great balance and, and good hip control. Heffernan is back handling the, uh, things really well here. He's, he's been in twice on dangerous takedown shots and once made it score, almost had it here a moment ago. Well, he, he's that, been the guy like that. Just like that. Now, the whistle still has the arm block. Krieger still has the arm block, so he didn't score. But he was there, wasn't he? He was there. Get off the edge. Get off the edge. Boy, Krieger dodged the bullet. The edge. Center. What Good we're one. seeing so far, basically, is, uh, is Heffernan's really quality shots against Krieger's scrap and his ability to defend himself. Krieger's going to have to have an offense. He's got to be able to generate penetrating offense of his own. He doesn't seem to have a big move that he goes to. Now, this may be where uh, Krieger would prefer to be. Heffernan, a nice job right there. Still doesn't have it. Didn't score. No score. Two to one. But he's letting Heffernan have too much, and he'll get burned on that. You don't wrestle a guy like Heffernan and give him this much and take it away from him. Sooner or later, he's going to get it. It's Krieger's choice. And he's, and he's where he wants to be, Doug. Now, in Iowa City, he had a choice he didn't take up. He took down. And our experience looking at Krieger this year is he's very strong on top. And if he's going to make a win of this against the number one ranked man, you'll have to do it on top. He's got the arm and the waist. You saw him cinching up the waist. He starts to put that leg in there. You know, he did, look at the arm come around the waist. That right arm of his is wrapped all the way around, clear up on the backbone on the other side. And that's when he starts to load you up. He'll pull you one way, leg you, block you, cradle you. He's just very good on top. Referee's counting toward a stalemate here. What Heffernan's going to try to do is get stalemated all the way through this and not get turned over. Heffernan would like to get this thing stalemated all every time. Instead of, instead of it having the, 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 the top man's offensive negligence and his inability to score, Heffernan's going to try to take his offense away by, by being flat on him. Keep the hips low. Nice move by Heffernan. A real, very nice, quick move. Caught him just in the change right there. Now here's where Krieger's, even though it looks like he's in trouble, Heffernan's got to get his hips up over top to score. He still has the arm under control. Stalemate. It was a good time for Heffernan to hit that switch right when, when uh, Krieger was changing directions and changing pressure. That's the time to go. Pop it right when there's a change of pressure. Jim Gibbons, four but coaches in 69 years. Three, that's three of them in 68. This is his first year. Les Anderson, you saw, sitting next to him. On the whistle again with a minute and five seconds to go in the second period. Tim Krieger, trailing two to one, is riding Heffernan, the number one ranked man from Iowa. See him, he's got that leg on now. He's starting to pull it around with the leg so he can get the arm, and then he starts pulling that arm through. The Cyclones lead nine to five after four weights. Kevin Dresser beat Joe Gibbons, and Greg Randall beat Jeff Gibbons. Otherwise, it's different from last time. Well, he's got the arm now, and he's, what he's Bottom trying to do is put him down. Man, he's There's a warning against Heffernan on the bottom. And, of course, that could be significant. Here's where he wants to be. Load, loading him, pulling him. Back points. That is what he's so good at. He's really a tough man in that tilt right. position. He knows Two. where he is, even though he's underneath. He's got that arm tight, tight. Now he's lost the arm, so he'll start to work his way up on top So Krieger takes a lead, three to two. Big Joe Roar from the crowd of Hilton Coliseum. We saw the number one man beat them, 142. The Cyclones are hoping it can happen here. See, he's got the arm. Now watch him, he'll just pull himself over. He's got the arm, and then he'll start to pull the other man up on top of him. See how those hips are loaded, and then he'll lift up with the toe. You see his right toe there lifting him up, scoring the back points. Heffernan takes, takes his choice and takes down. Well, I don't know if that is a very good decision. Well, 
three to two. He, he knows he has to score. I know. He, maybe take off, you think? He puts himself right back in the snake pit. Tom, you're on. When you fish around in the beehive, you like to hunt for honey and not for bees. <laughs> he's pulling right back where he wants him again. There, he's tough right here. He'll crowd you to death and break your arms. No back points. Here he comes again. Still no back points. It's only three to two. Krieger, it's, this goes both, could go either way. Yeah, but he's got a couple of minutes riding time on him, and he's piling on him now. This is not one of Hepburn's great spots. He might have been better than to take another spot. But as we say, it's only a one-point match. Well, heck, you know, you can take neutral and then uh, try to take him down and win. Put him back here where he's so tough. Now he pulls in the leg on the other side. What he does is he posts him on that knee. He's got this leg tied up on one side. And he'll drive the head off and then he'll the point. Here he comes. This is where he's good. Got an arm tied up. Oh, now he's got his hips up. Oh, he's good. reversed. Good. He lost it. It's 4 4. He's got the leg tied up, too. But it is riding time for. Or Krieger. Uh, he has enough that he'll have a point on right time. He's got to get off the bottom first. He's got to be able to get up. Uh, Hepburn's got to turn him in order to win. Krieger needs to get his head up off the mat and get up out of there. Hepburn really has to put on the mustard here to try to get Krieger on his back. It's a 4-4 score on the board, but Krieger has a right in time point six. He may let him up and then uh, I think he's going to try to put it to him. You think he's going to try to turn him? I think he's going to try to turn him here for a second. All right, let's see what happens. All right, he's got to put him down. But now he's here, he might let him go. Five to four, Krieger, but a takedown will tie it. A takedown would, for Heffernan, would be a draw. And there are only 14 seconds to go. Oh, boy. Nice move by Hepperhead. Oh, oh, real nice move. And a warning against Krieger for going out. So now Krieger has to go with just four seconds, three seconds. No! It's Krieger! This next tussle has gone on for many years, through college and as they vied for international honors. When world champion Kevin Jackson saw Royce Alger in his sights, it usually meant the number one ranking was on the line. 12 to six, the Cyclones lead. They have decisions by Summit and Kelly and Krieger and Carter, and Iowa has decisions by Penrith and Mitch Kelly. And that's the way the scoring has gone. All decisions were three points. Alger wants to stay up high, get the underhook here, create his own offense, because if you open it up, Kevin Jackson, for his double legs, like he did last time, there's hardly any stopping it. I called him a freight train, and if you saw it, you'll know what I meant. And you saw Royce Alger last time really take Glenn Lanham of Oklahoma State. He pinned him early. There's Jackson, especially a leg shot. Hasn't scored yet. Alger has a wizard. Two! Two. Some, uh, some like, like the way it started last time. Jackson on top. This is a nice shot, nice single leg, and he was able to stay with it. Royce tried to kick out. Jackson was able to stay with it for the two. This is one of the big crowd favorites in Iowa City, as you know. Royce Alger from Lisbon, just up the road. He's been undefeated this year. Each team has an undefeated wrestler. Alger's going for Iowa. He just got out of the one. And Krieger stayed undefeated for the Cyclones. Circle in. Let him in. To the middle. Circle. Circle back. Jackson has been a three-time All-American at this rate. Alger last year was at 158. And Alger got him in the leg but couldn't hold it. 
Well, technically, Jackson probably has to be considered a better wrestler. But as far as guts, determination, Royce is hard to equal. This is going to be really, really interesting. You saw Jackson lock up. He's not afraid to throw. That's what his, one of his specialties. He's tough. Take it easy. Brings the crowd up on his feet. see Barry Davis behind the Iowa bench. He's always up, trying to cheer his people off. Two to one. Jackson had a single leg takedown in the first minute. It must be tremendous to have somebody like Barry Davis' enthusiasm. You know, you've got to be enthusiastic, you've got to act enthusiastic. My goodness, with Barry Davis in the room, how can they all help but be enthusiastic in, in Iowa wrestling room? Alger and Jackson. Last time, Jackson got way ahead, and then Alger pushed him and pushed him and pushed him. Seemed that maybe Jackson got, uh, maybe got, he said he had a foot injury. Alger just pressured, pressured and pressured, and eventually there were stalling calls, and Alger won. A great comeback. Single leg for Alger. You know, it looked like Jackson gave him that leg, so he has something in mind here. It's like getting a bear by the tail, you know. He said, it looked like he said, come on, Royce, take this, take this leg. And it's two to one. You don't give Royce Alger that many opportunities like that, but Jackson was able to do it that time and get out of it. Referee Phil Rhodes is telling uh, Alger to let Jackson in, and so he does. He comes out to the middle again. Jackson has not made a, a good offensive move here in a few seconds. No, in a, in a minute. And Bill Rhodes is watching him very carefully. <laughs> Jackson leads two to one. Down. Iowa Take State down. takes down. Jackson. His team leads 12 to 6. We have Chipparelli and Metzger next. Raleigh Kane against Volker at 190. Sindlinger and Pope at heavyweight. The Cyclones lead by 6, 12 to 6. Now, how would you would like to control Jackson here? He'd like to keep him down and show some control, get some riding time. He handled it very well with that tight waist. Hey, that's definitely a lot, not what uh, Jackson had in mind when he chose down, though. I'm sure he had in mind exploding out and getting one point. You're on Iowa Public Television. Doug Brown with Tim Johnson. In Carver Back. Hawkeye Arena. Back. Alger on top. He has 20 seconds of riding time. I think bottom man's I think caution. bottom man went. Yes, Jackson was cautious. Set, set. come in easy. Set. Get on him. Jackson gets to his feet, but Algers forces him back down again. That tight waist. Let's go, hustle back. Set. Alger's really proven right now that he was no fluke in that last match. Of course, his 25 and 0 record <laughs> proves that. But this is his check, second opportunity with Jackson, and I think he's really showing that this is an even match. Right here. There's a reach back for the head and got himself loose. And escape makes it three to one in favor of Jackson. Well, we They're on their feet again with a minute to go in the second period. Get my time. A headgear. Here we go. Repair. Now Step back in. they go again. They lock up. Alger in on the leg. Jackson underhooks, fights him off.
And again, the headgear comes apart. It's 12 to 6, Iowa State over Iowa. Jackson here by two. Jackson. Well, we, have, we haven't seen Jackson oh. really go for the double, double legs. That single leg shot was about what we saw at the first, and it's kind of surprising. Yeah. The warning. And a beautiful move by Alger, a bear hug, and he came out on top. Big move by Alger, makes it 3-3. Three, three. Right here, Alger gets the bear hug. Covers the hips well, comes around, and doesn't let him give a chance. He doesn't give Jackson a chance to throw the wizard in because he's so tight with the chest. 15 seconds to go in the second period. Alger has been very tough on top. Boy, was he tough there. Reacted just so well. That was a real important move or, or series right there for Alger because Jackson wanted that last 12 seconds to get one point, and he may have given everything he had for that. It's the last time. period now, and he got riding time. It's a minute and two. Alger gets his choice. Alger wants down. Oh, it's a big one. It's a big one because Iowa has Rico Ciparelli next. They'd like to get some big points out of him going into the heavier weights. to look comfortable at 67, wouldn't you say? I think Royce Alger does not believe that anyone can beat him right now, and that's the difference right out there. His belief in himself, and he knows where he's at, is really putting the pressure on him. Four to three. That's not the double leg After that, the escape. that Jackson is so good at right there. That was a, a feeble attempt at his best move. Wizard by Jackson, but again, it's Alger in the commanding position. Alger's got control of the arm right here. He's got the arm trap. Nice job by Jackson coming out of that. That was a nice job by Kevin Jackson. He really, really dodged the bullet right there because Alger had the arm trap. Jackson was able to come out and face him. But Jackson has been doing that on defense and not offense. And that's the difference here in the last two periods. It's, it's surprising the, the match is four to three. And it's really been all Alger for the last two periods. Since the early single leg tech time. We are at 167. Jackson has been warned. And unless he makes a move, I'm quite sure that something's going to happen. There it is. Head coach Jim Gibbons has announced he is resigning and this is his last dual meet and it's the last match of that meet. Jamie Cutler and John Ostendorf gave us something special to remember from that one. John Ostendorf from Nichols, Iowa, Jamie Cutler from West Des Moines, Dowling. Well, they like 
Johnson and Chelsbeck have not met since the Northern Open in November of 1990, so it's been a long time. And Jamie Cutler is a different wrestler than he was a year and a half ago. So we'll see how it goes. And I mean that in a positive sense. Cutler has done the job. He's won a spot on the Cyclone team by beating out Todd Kinney, who was the Big 8 champ last year, who will be coming back for the Cyclones, and they feel real good about that. They're not giving up a uh, quality uh, person at heavyweight by having Kinney coming back for his senior year. Ostendorp and Cutler. Ostendorp in the black of Iowa. Cutler in the Cardinal of Iowa State. There's a single leg. Ostendorp in on it. Now he needs to cut around. He does. He covers it. Two points. And it's Ostendorp's takedown. That's how Ostendorp needs to be if he's going to win this match because he's getting up against a very agile heavyweight. Now look at this. Comes in for a double, but he shifts off to the single when he has to. Heads to the outside, does a nice dump. Then he stays on top, covers the hips for two. Nice action by John Ostendorp. Ostendorp rides. Rip it off there. Now Cutler's on his feet and out. Two to one now. When Take John down. Ostendorf is on the offense, you can bet the fur's going to be flying. There's a lot of action that's going to be happening. He's had some very exciting matches. Last year in the NCAA, one of the most exciting matches in the whole meet was a 10 to 9 loss that he had uh, that was just brought the crowd to its feet because of the action isn't necessarily a part of most heavyweight matches. Oh, here's Cutler in on the leg. And look at what's happened. Good. Hustled by Ostendorf. Well, that was good. He kept action. his hips in there and then managed to come spinning around on Cutler and get his second takedown. I think what we're seeing is potential come to life. And it's 4 2 after the escape. But Ostendorf has scored twice from the feet here in the first two minutes at heavyweight. Between periods, we're going to give you an address to write in for comments again and uh, suggestions, whatever, about our college wrestling coverage this year. So grab a pencil. Ostendorf and Cutler. Both trying to work the inside position. Cutler trying to get inside, work the angles for a, like a high crotch, single leg action. Ostendorf, he'll go either way. Both of them have the opportunities and the ability to throw. Across the back, this is Ostendorf. He wants to come around. He takes Cutler to the mat, but he could not put him on his back, and so he lost the position, and there's no takedown at all. In fact, he was lucky. Well, he there. was. You gotta love the action. Here's the address, College Wrestling, P.O. Box 6450, Johnston, Iowa, 50131 is the zip code. The P.O. Box 6450 and the zip code for Johnston, Iowa, 50131. You know, wow. to finish your uh, uh, statement there, you're exactly correct. He was lucky at the end. He threw that, but he didn't really have good control, and Cutler came right back into him and almost had the takedown. So it's 4-2. Okay, here it is. He throws him. Cutler comes around. So, Ostendorf doesn't have much of a move here, and that was a little risky, and Cutler was in, but the horn had sounded. And so there was no takedown. But other than that, it was a takedown. Ostendorf, you know, the coaches probably are saying, yeah, I love the action, but make it sure, John. Is he ready? What's in the okay. mouthpiece? 40 seconds. Goes Four back zero. to work. 4-0. Four 40. When the official says 40, he's talking okay, about the amount of time that uh, Ostendorf took for recovery. He gets a minute and a half okay, in a match. Two minutes to go in the second period, two minute third period yet to go. Ostendorf leading four, two starts on top, Cutler underneath. Cutler had nice on hand control, control there. Four, three. He's able to get out. He's a takedown away from taking the lead. But it's something he hasn't been able to do yet. That's He's right. Takedown. Ostendorf has the only two takedowns in this match. One on his shot, like no. that. Oh, another nice. one on the other man's shot. Here's uh, Cutler in again. And again, it looks like Ostendorf almost scored. 
I'll tell you, they're, they're, those are pretty slippery takedowns. John Ostendorf is taking nice action, but he's not finishing to the point of taking control. Jamie Cutler, you got to give him credit because he continues to move, and he's making it tough on Ostendorf. 4-3 Ostendorf. It's like they uh, were had oil on them at that time. It just pretty slippery. You know, Ostendorf has put a lot of action together right here, and Jamie Cutler's been wrestling, I think, very well this year and has shown that he can go a, to a, a whole seven minutes. I'm going to I'm going to say that uh, Ostendorf's going to have to uh, going to have to prove it here tonight against Cutler, and he's expended a lot of energy. You know what Again, I mean? He comes under the arms. Here is Cutler. He has Ostendorf on his back. It's a near fall position, although he's not going to pin him from there. So it's a five point move. Well, are you getting phone calls from uh, from the sky or something, TJ? You saw that one coming? Well, I, you know, that was a lot of energy expended by Ostendorf, and he didn't get a lot out of it. Cutler's done a nice job in wrestling all year, and I just, I don't question Cutler's shape. Oh, and here comes, o here comes Ostendorf. He has Cutler on his back. They're out of bounds. But it is two points there for the reversal on, for Ostendorf. Here's Cutler. Boy, he has a nice throw right there. And now he stays right on top of the hips, keeping it tight and getting the uh, three points uh, for back right there. Here's the reversal. Nice reversal by uh, John Ostendorf. Keeping the fire burning for himself right there, but he didn't get the back points because they went off the, out of the map. Eight to six. This is a good one. Second, second period ends as soon as the whistle blows. So now Ostendorf has his choice. What does he want to do? He takes down. Big move by Cutler, a five-point throw. Got him back in the match again. He's now up eight to six. Cutler with Iowa State on a little bit of a roll here late in this meet. Leeds is behind uh, Iowa 26 to 8, but every match is its own meet, you know, in these Iowa Iowa State duels. And Ostendorf comes out 8 to 7. I would guess that there's going to be more scoring. Ostendorf locks up. Chest to chest. Now they come apart. Cutler goes on the edge of the mat. I think Ostendorf lost his concentration just for a second there, but they're out of bounds. A minute and 24. Well, I think right here, I think Ostendorf looks pretty good. You know, about a couple of minutes ago, I thought he was fading a little bit. I think he looks good right now. I think we're going to have a real exciting uh, end. He just hasn't been able to control Cutler's hips when he's been into him real tight. Nice to see a good heavyweight match. Eight to seven, Cutler leads. He now has Cutler's a single. Cutler's in on the leg. There's the hips. If he can control them and come up and control the hips, it's still no nothing point. yet. Nothing he's yet. Gotta, he's got to attack the hip right here and come up. Nothing. Nope. And so we start again. We have 57 oh. seconds to go. Terrific heavyweight match between Cutler and Ostendorf at Iowa Carver Hawkeye Arena. Well, now, Doug, we got two tired heavyweights out there. Now, Ostendorf on the single leg, but Cutler manages to get out. Now he goes on his back. Ostendorf has it. Can Cutler come out? That's the question. He's got, Ostendorf is going to win this position because Cutler will not be able to get away. But the question now is, will Ostendorf pin him? Watch the referee's hand. He'll tell you. No, but Ostendorf wins. Well, 
well. They traded five point moves. And that man got the last one. Although neither of our next two wrestlers ever won an NCAA title, Matt Johnson and Bart Chelsvig each gained three time All American status. In 1990, as freshmen, they set the foundation for the future. They met twice, and they split in the national team tournament. Johnson won the second one, Chelsvig the first. But Chelsvig was very strong at the end of each meet. At the end of each match, Chelsvig was the man taking Johnson down. The second time ahead, Johnson was far enough ahead to stay ahead. Talented freshman Johnson, talented sophomore Bart Chelsvig. Chelsvig in the black for Iowa. Team score, 18 to three, in favor of the Hawkeyes here in Carver Hawkeye Arena. We still have three matches after this one. That's it, that's it. Don't reach so much, though. Chelsvig against Johnson. Chelsvig. Wrestling from the outside, not from the tie-up position. Well, Chelsvig had an outstanding career at Webster City, a three-time state champion. He won the freestyle title in the uh, USA Wrestling Junior Nationals. Matt Johnson, he was almost a three-time state champion, only an injury his junior year kept him from winning three, three titles. And uh, he was rated the third best 155-pounder nationally by Amateur Wrestling News his senior year out of Colorado, Brighton, Colorado. The so. starting line. Well, he's wrestling at 170, at 67, after having been at 77 most of the year. Bobby Thompson of the Cyclones has been injured, and he's kind of a day-to-day -day proposition with a bad knee. All the way, all the way. So Johnson has been down at 67, and, and obviously doing very well here. There. Snapped there. down by Chelsvig, wasn't able to get advantage. Johnson came back to his position very well. We've used a minute and a half in the first period. Gable, Johnson, on the Iowa bench. Well, they've seen each other a couple of times now, head to head. They've had a chance to be coached against each other, and they know what to expect. On his head, too, Bart. On his head, guys on the edge. Russell, Russell. Work in, guys. Keep wrestling. There, Bart. Bart Chelsvig going back to the center. Johnson, a long single leg shot down low. Oh, he got a nice cut off. He get the take down. Real nice basic move there. He cut two off to the double leg down. for the two points. It was a uh, heads up basic move by Matt Johnson to, to back to center to finish that off. He was in on the single so many times they don't. Uh, a, a wrestler is not able to finish it off because he doesn't cut off. Right here, in on the single. Look as he comes through with his left arm and just that kind of does a hook shot okay, there. Cover him. Cuts off for two. Two to nothing, Johnson. As in the earlier matches, Johnson gets the takedowns early. Get him now, right now, get it, get it. Roll by Chelsby. Well, and Johnson likes to put in the legs. He's got the legs. He could be a little he's high. He's high, yeah. high with the bar arm right there. He's still. And Chelsby turns it in. Yeah, and it's a reversal. And he was a little high, he didn't know quite where he was. Well, actually, Johnson was lucky he was that far out of bounds. Well, look how high he is right now. And as he's trying to turn right there, shoulders okay, are still him. in. Cover him. It's pretty close to everybody being out of bounds. I, I don't know, but, but you can see that Chelsea's legs were still in, and they called the two points. 20 seconds to go in the first period. Johnson escapes. Leads three to two. Johnson's shot in there was stopped by Chelsea with kind of a, he just kind of hipped him out and then went into a front headlock. Well, these young men, I think, are going to be around for a while, too, and be interesting to watch their progress in the next couple of years. With the end of the first period, Johnson leads three to two. Lady and Ladies, right here is Bart Chelsea's aunt, and anxiously looking on, saying, come on, Bart. Green takes down. Johnson leading, deferred. Chelsvig takes down. He can yeah, escape the tie. Johnson has riding time, 22 seconds worth, and that's all. Nice move by Chelsvig, comes out 3-3. Three, three. Well, he was able to get his hips out there and cut away for, two, uh, for an escape then. With a hip heist, 3-3. Three, three. On the feet, each man has scored 
A two-point move. Johnson had a takedown on a low single, but Chelsby reversed him in the first period. Iowa 18, Iowa State 3. It was a shutout until Steve Hamilton dominated Mark Ryland at 158 pounds. Heel pick that uh, failed. Long, low single by Johnson that failed, so it's lock up. Well, oh, Chelsby. You know, what he did right there was a nice job of just straight ahead wrestling, Doug. He kept, kept coming at both wrestlers need to do that because I don't think there's a lot of difference between these two. It's just good straight ahead wrestling. Bart Chelsea, pressure, pressure, little pick right there, straight ahead wrestling, two point takedown. Okay, get it? That's Hold called toe to toe, right. going at your man. Second heel pick there in a 10 seconds, and the second one worked. Break him down, flatten him, one step down, stay behind the arm. Stay behind the arm. Nice Got job following him. through there, following his man by Chelsvig. Break him all the way down, put him back down. Johnson rolls, but he hasn't been able to face Chelsvig. Mark's covered him pretty well. Johnson underneath rolls again. Chelsea's Good keeping ride. Of, yeah, he's keeping a lot of pressure on the top Get right there. And keeping Johnson from doing a lot of movement, actually. Now, Johnson is a freshman, but he has been able to get out pretty well this year. And Chelsvig here is doing a fine job of riding him. Again, Johnson rolls and goes on his back. Chelsvig cut him off in the middle and almost had him on his back, but not quite enough. Well, Matt Johnson needs to uh, vary his uh, methods of trying to escape right there. 49 seconds of riding time at the end of the second period in favor of Chelsvig and Johnson. We'll start, I'm sure, on the bottom because he feels he can get out. Right here, he tries that little roll again, but Chelsea is ready for it. He sticks the half in and doesn't quite hold him for the count needed for near fall points. Matt Johnson is down again. Like I said, he needs to get one somehow, some way. Okay, there's the sit down. Now he's got to come back to something else. Not flat riding well, and he's in the position here maybe to pick up a riding time advantage. It just crossed a minute. That's something that didn't happen in the first two matches. Neither man rode the other particularly well. But here, Chelsvig has taken Johnson through the last minute or so of the second period, and so far, about a half a minute of the third. Now Johnson faces it. Now Johnson has to get to work on the feet right there. He's got to go toe to toe. He's got to go straight at his man right there and get that momentum out of the hand of Chelsea if he wants to get back in this match. And as we said, in the last in. two matches, no matter who was ahead, and it was Johnson in those other matches, Chelsea dominated the last minute. Well, so Johnson has to turn it around yeah, Johnson here. has to turn it around right here. He's, you know, he's in the mat. He's, for all practical purposes, he's behind by two points with that riding time, but he can erase that if he'd take him down the next 20, 30 seconds. Chelsea. Leading by one with 57 seconds to go. A takedown by Johnson here and a ride out would actually win it for him. So Iowa State can still win this match if Matt Johnson would take Chelsvig down and ride him out. But Johnson looks tired. Chelsvig trying to keep his feet in to gain control. No points. No points. Dan Gable can't believe it. <laughs> 38 seconds to go. Inside trip, catches the leg, and the referee didn't call it a takedown. And again, Chelsea, the uh, aggressor, goes out of bounds. There's a warning against Johnson. And the same thing is happening here that happened in the previous two meetings between these. Chelsvig is dominating the last minute. Well, now if Matt Johnson takes him down, the best he can do is tie because Chelsvig definitely has the riding time point. Chelsvig with a underhook, a heel pick, and a takedown. He just kept coming after him, kept doing it. The Iowa wrestler wins it here in the last two and a half, or the last period and a half, Doug. 
He came from behind. I'm sure Kelsvig. that's a Kelsvig family there going, going crazy. And he right still has four so. seconds to go. Leading seven to four with riding time. And Chelsvig wins the rubber match, seven to four, eight to four with riding time. Transferring from Oklahoma State in 1993, Jody Wilson knew very little about the Iowa State-Iowa showdown. Against Lincoln McElravey, a wrestler who was just making his mark, Wilson found out quickly how rivalries grow. Now we go to 142 pounds, and I think this is going to be a big match because this is a fine freshman from Iowa who is on a roll, Lincoln McElravey, who's come into the lineup, and a veteran transfer from Oklahoma State into the Iowa State lineup, senior Jody Wilson, ranked number 17. Actually, McElravey's ranked higher, and we'll see whether the good young man is better than the good veteran. Well, it is. A, it's a swing match. It's one of the close matches that Iowa State needs to have. And, uh, they can't. There's not a lot of margin for error for Iowa State tonight in tonight's meet, and this is a very, very important match. McElravey in the black for Iowa is one of the most sought-after high school seniors last year in the country. In four years of high school, he won five state titles. That's because he won one in eighth grade. But Jody Wilson was a champion in Oklahoma, a great wrestling state. He comes from a history of wrestling in the family that is practically unmatched. Shelby Wilson, who was a great Olympic wrestler for Oklahoma State. His brother, Eric, wrestled in the cowpoke program. And then this year, he decided he wanted to get that last year of wrestling in when Oklahoma State was penalized with the NCAA. And so he came in. And there he is down on the legs of McElroy, but he doesn't get the takedown yet. He has it. He has it. He gets the two because Mackle Ravy had to go to his hands to support himself. Wilson scores first. But Mackle Ravy didn't take long to get out, did he? No. It's Lincoln Mackle Ravy in the black for Iowa, trailing two to one against Jody Wilson of Iowa State in the middle of the first period at 142 pounds. We have a minute and 40 seconds to go. Again, Wilson shoots under. McElravey comes around, counters, and gets his first takedown. That was a nice job right there. He stayed right in tight, and he, and he lowered his level and got the points there. Look at that. He comes around, and now he drops down with that level, comes around, so covers the legs, has the go two ahead. points. 3-2. McElravey likes to go on his feet, so he goes in the international start position and lets Jody Wilson out. 3-3. Three, three, we're even. He wants to settle it on the feet. Wilson got the first takedown. He may be happy to do it up there, too. Very low single shot. Wilson more a methodical wrestler. He, uh, he, he wants to have a game plan. He gets in, and he doesn't want to get out of that game plan. McElravey more of a scrambler, and he's, he's willing to get in a flurry. He's very talented and has lots of weapons, so he wants to go at it a lot. I think Jody Wilson got a finger in the no, eye here. Right. Bobby Douglas calling for some ice. But Wilson is already no back shot. at work again. No There's a minute to go in the first period. 3-3. No the significance snap. between the two styles, hit one that is hit methodical, snap. another that um, really likes the flurry, is that the methodical wrestler may get a little more frustrated when things happen that don't go, go according to his plan. 3-3. Jody Wilson on the right for Iowa State. He's in on the leg right away. But McElravey's in a good counter position. Yeah, it's good and nice. Very he got good his hips out and he got two. two, three, two and two, it's three, Iowa three. score. That was wonderful reaction by Lincoln McElravey. That was as deep a single as you get. Wilson came to the mat. A big tumble there. And we're getting a timeout here for injury. Well, this is the end right there. And he just dumped on top of him a little bit. But um, what happened earlier was Jody Wilson got in on a very deep single. Here's, here's the, uh, now see, Lincoln McElroy's knee did come down before Jody Wilson came down, and so it was legal. But as we were saying, Lincoln McElroy got those two points by having wonderful reaction to that deep shot, scooted his hips around and came around for the two points. 
We have a little uh, shot of what happened last night. Maybe we'll be able to use here shortly with Lincoln McElravey up against his opponent from Ohio State. He's leading Jody Wilson here with 29 seconds to go in the first period, and uh, Wilson was dazed by that little slam, but not enough to keep him from getting out quickly. 5-4 in favor of McElravey. Look at Heel that pick, pick, but not, a, not close enough. Uh, this is uh, going to be a real interesting match here. And it's, if they can both keep it up, it's going to be interesting all the way. If one falters or gets lazy, watch out. See the time ticking away in the first period. Again, a low shot by McElravey. He's dogged on it. He doesn't want to let go. Period ends 5-4 McElravey. Well, that was close to two points right there. Here we go last night. This is what happened when Lincoln hey, McElravey so, so. went up against Charlie Bex last night. Uh, Iowa against Ohio State. There's that little inside trip action down to the leg. And boom, McElravey went ahead there after trailing 6-1 to one early in the match, and he eventually won, and Iowa beat Ohio State. Here is uh, McElravey's choice in the second oh, period. He picks the down position, and Wilson rides. Wilson's go a back, real competitor. Back, back, He's not going to let getting of what he thought was slammed by without putting it right back to McElravey. Jody Wilson of Iowa State in the second period with a minute 52 to go. Trails Lincoln McElravey 5 to 4, and McElravey now has his sixth point by escaping 6 to 4. Two point lead for the Hawkeye. Two takedowns for McElravey, the freshman from Iowa, and one takedown, the first one as a matter of fact, in the meet by Jody Wilson. The team score after three matches Iowa 8, Iowa State 6. Front headlock, missed there by McElravey, but he keeps coming, he keeps coming. He has lots of weapons and he likes to use them one after the other. Well, he puts a lot of pressure on you and he does change levels well, but he just loves to flurry. Not from a defensive style either. He likes to get in the flurry and go offense. And that's what he's done. Fireman, 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 fireman. A minute fireman, five to go in the second period. Wilson. That's out of bounds, no score. 6-4, the man in black. Well, there's been a lot of close calls there for McElravey as far as the He's points. in on the legs. Nope. That's out of bounds. Wilson's really dodging a lot of bullets right now. Is it, it looks like McElravey, he's really made for this Iowa Dan Gable style, isn't he? Well, like I said, he likes to come at you. He likes to put a lot of pressure on you. And yeah, he's made for the Iowa style. Iowa eight in to four in takedowns here and eight to five in the team score. That's again McElravey in there. No score. It's like uh, these bullets are going zing, zing, right past Wilson's head right here. It's only six to four, and yet McElravey's had about three times as many close to takedowns. There he is on, uh, on a high crotch underneath, and he's ahead. Eight to four, an impressive performance early in the second period by Lincoln McElravey. Changes levels awfully well. He has, does a lot of different kinds of things, as you can Did see. You Keep it proven, guys. Don't hang on me now. Don't hang on me, guys. The That's the time Both left the in the second the period. Iowa and Iowa State Feel the from the Hilton Coliseum. Now he's trying to bar the arm and go take uh, okay. Wilson to his back, which That's is not an easy thing to do. There's Ken McElravey, uh, Lincoln McElravey's dad, down here from South Dakota. He's, he's proud, but he's probably more nervous right now than anything. I'm still stuck, Kevin. Get one, get one. Jody Wilson has his choice. He starts down. McElravey lets him go right away. The score is eight to five for Wilson's escape now. Three-point lead for McElravey. He has right, no riding time. Oh, that was almost close to a whip over right there by McElravey. He's really putting a lot of pressure on Wilson. And you know, Wilson's hanging in there. You've got to give him credit. These almost are because Wilson's able to look at that this. Was, that was a low pick by Wilson, but McElravey is countering it very, very well. Does a great job of scooting his hips. Look at that hip pressure right now. Look at that hip pressure. He, he, Wilson has no control. Oh, now he has it. Just a powerful set of hips, and he leads 10 to 5, 10 to 6 after the escape. Well, pretty soon, 
uh, Wilson, as, as, as close as he's hung in there, he could get called for stolen unless he does something like that. And again, he's got Wilson coming. reaches him but can't keep him. And around he comes. That's the fourth takedown on a counter move. Look at now that wasn't a counter. In on a high single, dumps him down. He has Two. Wilson's head cracked. Oh. He could pin him here if he gets him. He has a minute to do it. Wilson comes out. 12 to 7. I think you can see seven right now why Dan Gable made the move. Troy Steiner to 134. Lincoln McElroy out of red shirt in February. You hardly ever see that. Pulls him out of red shirt, puts him in a true freshman. I think he can compete at this weight, Doug. And I'll tell you, there was the counter, and he has Wilson tired out from the looks of it. Again, a counter, 16 to 9 after the escape. 18 to 9, I should say, after the near fall. 18 to 9, right. Eighteen to nine. And again. He's and he just lets him up with 16 seconds left. Now he's just burying Jody Wilson. 20 to 10. Little boot scoot again. Boy, he controls his hips so well. 22 to 10. Four seconds. I thought this was an important match because it was in a big meet. Well, at Iowa State against a veteran. And McElravey looked the best he's looked since we've seen him. Four-time All-American Eric Aiken got rid of one nemesis when Chad Zapital graduated in 1993. But darn if he didn't acquire another one when Mike Mena, a four-time high school champion in Illinois, entered the Iowa lineup. This ought to be a great one because Aiken is ranked number two, but Mena of Iowa is ranked number eight. So many times in this series, we've seen the 118 pound class go in an upset one way or another. It sets the tone. We have a lot of people here on a beautiful day, quite a bit of sunshine, and the crowd is actually late getting here because it was just kind of nice to dawdle outside. There's a high crotch move by Aiken, one of the, a nifty high crotch, but can he turn it into a takedown? Yes, two, two nothing Aiken. Well, what I saw right there was a very focused wrestler that knew what he wanted to do right off the top, and that was to take the action to Mena. And sometimes Mena, he's more of a defensive wrestler on his feet, and that's something they'd like him to improve on. But right here, this is the finish to that, where he gets him down all the way to his all, all, his, all fours there. But Aiken did a nice job there okay, on that good. single leg. Aiken ahead 2-0 in first period, three minutes long. They all just start on their feet in the first period. Second period is third, two minutes long, and the third period, two minutes long, as you know. Wade Chalice, the official, as usual, the Ferrar referees, has a microphone, so you'll be able to hear him talking to the, refer to the wrestlers and also to the coaches who might want to come out and uh, discuss things with him, as they occasionally do. Aiken riding with a tight waist and a near arm bar. You know, one thing I've noticed about Eric and Aiken this year is that in the past, he's had a, a tendency sometimes to let up and have some lapses. I have seen him be more focused this year than, than ever in his career, and he just seems like he doesn't have any let ups, and we've talked about this before. That's what makes the difference between the national champion and the runners up, or those two to one those that can get in there with no let ups. Here we are in the first period with about a half of time gone, a minute and a half. Aiken leads. Mena two to one after a nice high crotch takedown early in the period. Well, you saw there Mena was able to stop the shot by Aiken this time. He's good on his, as far as defensive wrestling, and Coach Gable would like him to come along in his offense and take the shots himself. There's Bobby Douglas in the foreground that brought this Iowa State team down to Iowa City. Actually, it's the first time since he's been coached at Iowa, Iowa State that his team has come here teams uh, stopped the home and home series a couple of years ago. Last year the meet was at Iowa State. Mike Mena, four-time high school champion from Illinois and a very fine wrestler. Aiken tried to get in on the leg and there uh, you saw him going for the high crotch again but, he, but Mena this time was looking for it. I got it. It'll be almost. interesting to see how uh, Chalice calls this as a referee here. Uh, means that there's been about six shots of Aikens to none for uh, Mena. There's a shot by Mena on the edge of the mat, but a high front headlock counter by uh, Aiken kills that one off with about 30 seconds to go. 
you know, from a standpoint of strategy right there, it would uh, probably serve the Iowa wrestler good if he was called for stalling here because what he's a good wrestler, and he needs to just get on the offense there. He's got good shots, and so far, Aiken's been taking the shots to Mena. We have 20 seconds to go in the first period. Eric Aiken of Iowa State in the red leads Mike Mena of Iowa 2-1. to one. We're just starting. There's a nice shot by Mena, but... Uh, Aiken, with his experience and his quickness, was able to stay faced off on it. That was the first real shot that uh, Mena had. And that was off the defense. End of the first period, okay, two to right, one, Aiken. The coaches are up on their feet. There's Dan okay, Gable Iowa at the edge of the mat, exhorting his wrestler to go. You'll be on top, period, Look at those titles places. in his time. What a, what a success. Where's Ryan Conner? That's Bobby Douglas of Iowa State. You wrestle here. Not only, you were talking about Eric Aiken, what he's done to get himself ready to go, and go the extra mile. Remember when uh, Troop said, he got me going. That's right. He got me going. He says, we're gonna, you're gonna beat people from now on really bad. No more five to four. Aiken started on top, men ahead underneath. Turns in on Aiken, trying to get a reversal. And he has it. Big move by Mena. Well, that's a real important series right there for Mena because he needed to explode out of there to have any chance in this match, and that's what's going to win it for him if he does. Right here, it will be interesting to see if the weight cut has any uh, effect on Aiken. Well, that would be interesting. And now what that does is get the crowd into it. Look at this. For the first time. With a nice little switch there, gets into a single leg and gets around for the two-point reversal. And it almost, you can almost call walking hands right there. It was uh, close, but you give reaction time. Actually, you know, Mena has quite a ways to come down 118 too. He's a big 118 pounder. And uh, Aiken is out, that ties it 3-3. We're in the second period, a two minute period. We've used up 30 seconds and we're even at three. The only takedown was Aiken's. Again, he tried that high cross move, couldn't get it. High up on the feet. Now you just feel the momentum changing here a little bit. Mena's uh, creating some action. He's starting to move the head a little bit and, and get into the ties. And, and he's looking for a whip over right here. But right now he's got the crowd behind him and he's got the, uh, Aiken's dauber down to play big. Well, Aiken was able to go straight in, straight under for that first high crotch takedown. But uh, he hasn't been able to get around the corner, and, and Men has been stopping that straight shot. There he went around the corner a little bit. Now it's, a, it's the other way. To see him finish this. And that was well done by Aiken for a takedown five to three. And that's where Aiken has improved. He's improved technically in the last couple of years to where he's not just using brute force, he has really improved on his technique. The escape makes it five to four. Actually, he, uh, he gave Men a new look on that single leg to the opposite side. Here, to the uh, little outside single right there, comes up with it, now as he finishes, he sticks in for the trip behind the back leg, and then he covers the hips and gets him down to the mat for two points. What an important match, 118 pounds, we have 25 seconds to go in the first period. The man in red of Iowa State, Eric Aiken, who came down to 118 where he'll be in the Nationals. If everything goes right. Leads five to four over Mike Mena, an outstanding number eight ranked wrestler for the Hawkeye. That was a big takedown for Aiken, but I believe he's gonna have to score a few more points to win this match. 5-4, end okay, the second period. Position, now Aiken will go okay. under. Iowa State selection wants the down position, third period down. 5-4, we'll see what Mena does, right, whether he's just gonna let uh, Aiken up. The riding time is 48 seconds for Aiken. He does not have a point. Remember at the, at the end of the match, if one wrestler has a minute okay, good. more three. on top okay, in the riding Hawks position than his opponent, right, he gets an extra point above. tacked Thank onto you. his score. And uh, Aiken is 12 seconds from that. 6-4, Mana wants to go on his feet. He hasn't been able to take Aiken down, but he's counting on it. 6-4. And we'll see who's ready in the third period. That's, That's a right. difference. Hey because a takedown will determine the win winner here right now. It's not gonna stay six to four. 
A minute and 38 to go as they come back to the center again. It's the huge opening match with the smallest of the wrestlers at 118 pounds. Now uh, there's a wow. warning against Aiken for stepping back. Yeah, he stepped back one time in this whole match and he gets called for stalling. It seems like uh, uh, the referee was uh, considering the time in the match, you know what I'm I saying? Think in the third period. Uh, Aiken will have to make a move here, otherwise I'm sure it's gonna happen again. We have a minute well, 10 I was gonna to say, go. right now, Iowa's got the advantage. All Mena has to do is make Aiken look bad, and he's gonna get him called for stalling just because of the mindset of the referee. Not necessarily fair, but that's the way it's gonna happen. Mena, if he'd just mix it up and get after him, he's got it going. Aiken was not able to reach, but he did make the shot. Aiken needs a shot again here. And obviously, so does Mike Mena. Well, Mike Mena, all he has to do is make him look bad here, and there's going to be a point in his way. Six to four. In favor of the man in red, Eric Aiken, with 30 seconds to go. Now, you can count it down in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Eric Aiken has been worn. Now he goes under, gets caught in a front headlock, but clears himself out. So now there's very little time for Mena to score. Front headlock. They're still in. Now they're out of bounds. With only seven seconds to go, and Mena's going to have to come up with a lightning bolt. Well, Coach Gable want Mena to get after him, but really had a minute to do that, and he just wasn't able to take advantage of the situation. Now, Aiken could even be uh, warned, could even get a stalling point. He did not get it. He wins six to four. He beat him on his feet. Six to four in favor of Aiken. And Iowa State goes up three to nothing with a win at 118 pounds. One of the more flamboyant wrestlers during our years in college wrestling was Ray Brimzer. Iowa State freshman Matt Mulvihill encountered this unique All-American in 1995, and he's probably glad he won't have to again. Now, Matt Mulvihill is coming in at 177 pounds for Iowa State. He is a redshirt freshman from Dowling, West Des Moines. One state title in high school. He had three places, but he's up there against going, Ray Brinzer. We saw him beat Mark Smith of Oklahoma State last week. He's experienced, he's talented, and he's aggressive out there, so it should be interesting. Matt Mulvihill, first chance to wrestle Brinzer. And that's the problem when Brinzer's in charge. He takes you right to your back. I mean, what do you say? He is just awfully dangerous. And he's intuitive. He could end it right here. Oh, he could. There it is. Whoa. Well, I'm a little tired tonight. I think I'll end early. 24 seconds in. I've never seen anyone have more fun at the sport than Ray Brinson. I mean, and I'm not saying it's just fun when you pin in 24 seconds, but he has fun all the time, win or lose. And uh, the fans, well, the Hawkeye fans love him. In our 70s flashback, it was brute strength versus brute strength as national champion Frank Santana met up with All-American Bud Palmer. The year is 1978. I think we'd all have to say that Santana is uh, the heavy favorite to win this, but it's going to be a good bout. He's undefeated, 15 and 0. Palmer's 11 and 5. They're both seniors. Santana has finished second and then first in the national championship tournament. Yes, last year he was the national champion. He's currently 15-0 on the season. Going under, double. There he is, with kind of a bear hug. Yes. Kind of a bear hug trip. And as. Uh, Good national champions have. He has a lot of there confidence. There it is right here. There's your little bear hug. There's comes your, well, he, he, his trip really was much earlier than what it appeared, but uh, he was in underneath those arms and barred him down for the two. See two lines. Two or nothing okay, with a minute man. 25 left in the first period. He turned him loose on purpose there for the one point, because I think he wants to get those takedown maneuvers. 
They want to be content with trying to ride there on top. I don't think he feels he can get any fall points at this point, at least. So we he, now have a 2-1 score. He's the latest in a long line of outstanding 190-pounders at Iowa State. That's right. We've had some good ones. Al Nason. Ben Peterson. Ben Peterson. A minute left in the first period. Frank Santana is from Skokie, uh, Illinois, and we have uh, Bud Palmer from Muncie, Indiana, the Iowa boy. Now, we know a lot of you will be who are watching are Iowa fans because this is Iowa State country in Hilton Coliseum. These two teams meet again February 18th, I think, is the date in Iowa City. I think uh, we want to point out here while they're in a neutral position that uh, Bud Palmer was redshirted last year, I believe, due to a, uh, uh, an existing neck injury. So uh, uh, we'll see a lot of him this year around the wrestling circles. Two to one. First one both. Now he's going to warn them both. You don't see a double star warning often, but I think it probably was pretty well merited there because yes. neither boy was doing much. Two to one is the score. There's a trip by Santana. That was a real good heel kick on the part of Santana. He may have a little edge and speed. He was quick on, on that move. In the last five seconds, four to one. This time, there's an end of the match, end of the period score, and Iowa State gets it. They used to talk about that against uh, Oklahoma State. That, remember when uh, Myron Roderick was down there? Here we go right here. You see that pick there on that ankle? Did a real nice job. Picked that ankle for the two-point takedown on the part of Santana. When uh, Myron Roderick was at uh, Oklahoma State, he, you had to look out for his boys in the last 15 seconds or so. It was a good stand-up spin through for an escape on the part of Santana, one-pointer. It's five to one. If you take somebody down with five seconds left, they aren't gonna get anything back on you. No, that's very true. Five to one. And Iowa State leads 15 to 11. This is a big one for Iowa State if, as we said. Real good basic drop through, good position on behalf of Santana. He picks him up, Lift. takes him down for the two. Awful good move, got in there real deep penetration. Frank likes to use a high crotch, but he's been in there on doubles. He's been able to go all the way through. And notice he really came high on that too. He really didn't even have much at all as far as the legs were concerned, but he got in so deep, he caught uh, uh, Palmer completely off his base and off guard and put him down pretty easily for the two-pointer. Seven to one. Seven to one. With two ten. Here we go right here. You notice there kind of a little duck under combination with it. Picks him up. Puts him down to the mat for two-point takedown. When you pick a man off the mat like that, it's pretty simple in so far as putting him back to the mat because he has nothing to work off of. Very little counter that he can put back on you and it's pretty easy to garner the two points. Palmer stands up and comes out for his third point. It's seven to three. He tried to he tried to penetrate the defense and couldn't do it. Frank Santana's very stable. Use for him. Him, I can't hear that. I don't know what Frank is saying. Frank Santana was talking to him. But to Spike Israel, the referee. Oh, I see. He's a hot guy. Here that? comes our escape on the path of uh, Palmer. Notice how he splits those arms, ducks back underneath with his elbow, and bang, pushes off for the one-pointer. It was a good escape, a good effort on his part. Did you hear Spike Israel say to Bud Palmer, he says, he's a hot dog. And he's pretty good, too. It's seven to two here. With Santana, seven to three, isn't it? <laughs> seven to two. I thought I saw three there a while ago. Not much going on right now. They're both kind of looking for position as far as the takedowns concerned. There comes yeah. a real good move. A, he brings the, the knee right to the head. Well, he caught that single leg and spiked the heel at the same time, or tripped it. Had excellent control. Nine to two. Well, Santana can just do so many things to his opponent that it's. There it is right here. Watch, he takes that far knee, that near knee right there, then trips right there, has good control of the upper body likewise, and bang, there it is, two-point takedown. Okay, top man. Made it pretty easy. Of course, when you get a national champion, you know, you should realize, too, that sometimes uh, when they do move, they do make it look easy. But they are talented. Santana's no exception. He's a good one also. Come on, Frank. Let's go, 
All right, nine to three. Nine to three is the score. This is the one that Santana wants to ice the meat. Iowa State has won seven against Iowa over the years, lost five. And last year we had that draw here at Hilton Coliseum, and I don't think anybody here is ever going to forget. Yes, as we indicated earlier, why they went to the heavyweights deciding the match uh, in both the uh, previous two yeah. meets. Well, what they're trying to do here. Well, you guys shoot takedowns too. You got one point. A point for Santana puts him in double figures. It's 10 to 3 with his team leading 15 to 11. There's an attempt on the path of uh, Palmer, but uh, he overdrove his base, so to speak, and didn't get in deep enough for any pen. Hey, there's a good attempt on nice his part. Check. It almost came up with that. Almost kind of a, yeah, kind of a pancake affair where he was up. Double arm bar. Sure. You make one of those work, you don't only get two, you usually end up with five or a fall. Yep. You get the two-point takedown, three-point or two-point near fall. Just a little reminder to Frank not to get too careless. What he's trying to do here is take the pressure off the heavyweights. Just keeps moving in, Good moving in, and moving yeah. in. He stays right after it. There's the end of the second period. Those points give Santana 12 to 3 lead. And I think the people here in the Hilton. Here's a case right here. Notice Santana got that arm under hook. He's going to go right underneath it. He's going to force that wizard out of there, which he did, and came right into the uh, two point takedown. So uh, Palmer there wanted to put that wizard move in, but Santana didn't give him any hope of getting it in there at all. The people here were up okay. on their feet for at the end of that match. I think they just suddenly really realized that if Santana can salt this one away, the meet's in for Iowa State. I don't think there's going to be too much question of it. 14,000 plus, plus a few probably came in the back door. The Palmer, band. Palmer's making a uh, gallant effort here, and I think trying to put moves together, uh, indicative of the fact he hasn't been uh, stalling here, but uh, Santana is just a superior wrestler. 235 left in the match. Santana has been on top for a minute and 29 seconds total, and Palmer for two seconds. Both these boys are real strong boys. They both uh, not only have strong uh, strong in the legs, but they got strong upper body strength. That's good. Uh, too quick. Boy on the bottom moved too quick. He, he cautioned him, and that's a uh, visual and as well as a verbal caution. That's no points. Remember that Iowa State wrestles Wisconsin on Monday night. A good stand up, turn and escape on the path of uh, Palmer. 12 to 4. This Bud Palmer is no slouch, as we said earlier. He's a good 190 pounder, and he's proven that before. Now, here comes Spike Israel again, because Frank Santana says, I can't hold him. He's, he's, he's wearing baby oil or something. Palmer's coming to the stand-up position now. Notice he's up underneath that arm. He twists out, spins in. There's the one-point escape. Well done, well executed. Dan Gable, who knows that this one is slipping away from him. So let's go through the upcoming matches again. Monday night, remember, 10.30 p.m., our delay broadcast of Iowa State versus number four, Wisconsin. On Thursday the 12th, two matches next week, ISU versus number five, Lehigh, delay broadcast. Saturday the 21st, Iowa State against number two, Oklahoma State. And Monday, January 30th, Iowa State versus the University of Minnesota, ranked number 15. We have a lot of Iowa State wrestling, some of the top teams in the country this month. It was a good move on the part of Palmer. He went in for the double. He had good position on it, too, but boy, Santana was tough. He, he uh, sprawled, had a good base on him, and countered it real well, but Palmer had a real effort in there. Did a nice job. There he goes oh. for a good single shot. Did a nice job on it. See, oh, he... Nice, nice uh, move by Palmer. It was well executed, a good move. Take down and try to put him up again. 13 to 6 is the score, a minute 42. Yes, that was an escape there on the behalf of Santana. Palmer had to almost turn him loose for that matter in order to get some more points together in order to get back into this match. He goes That's for another single, single again. Now remember, a lot of Iowa State wrestlers over the years have liked to have, although that turned out badly for Santana. Another two-pointer. He's it's tough. It's 13 Palmer. to 8. Have tried to have their opponents put the single leg on them and then counter from it. Ben Peterson used to do that, Mason used to do it, and That's I think right. Santana likes to, but Palmer's nailed him twice. Palmer's not going to give him two here. If anything, he'll give him one so he can make another another uh, takedown attempt. So he'll turn him loose for one, but not two. There it is. Okay, now 14-8. You'll see Palmer coming back shooting for another. 
to begin. Santana. Goes to show you don't dare. Don't dare let up. 45 oh. seconds left. There's the single by Santana. He gets, he let it go. 33 seconds left in this match. 25 seconds, you can see Santana looking at the clock. If he wins, Iowa State wins, and it's gonna be a stall warning against, against Santana. Yeah, that, that was the necessary call. He hasn't done much here just in the last part of this period. A point for Palmer, 14 to nine. I think Frank looks a little tired. At this point, he does, but maybe he feels he's got it in the bag, and so he's trying to, uh-oh, here comes a two-pointer, another double leg on the part of Steve. And it's Palmer. 14 to 11 <laughs> with four seconds left. I said in the earlier part of this match that Palmer would give him all he could give him, and he's just doing that. He hasn't quit. Yeah. The Iowa State coaches are up saying, look out, and, and Frank says, don't worry. See his hand? Okay. At this point, he's playing it pretty close. He sure is. There's the end of it. There was no writing time. I think the score now is, if that's correct, 15 to 11. Santana wins, and Iowa State wins. There's the finger in the air, number one, says Frank Santana. Iowa Public Television hopes you enjoyed memorable matches. Your purchase of this tape makes it possible for Iowa Public TV to continue to produce outstanding college wrestling meets for wrestling fans nationwide. If you'd like more information about how to order other IPTV wrestling tapes too, write to College Wrestling Iowa Public Television, Box 6450, Johnston, Iowa, 50131. That's College Wrestling Iowa Public Television, Box 6450, Johnston, Iowa, 50131. I'm Doug Brown. Thanks again for your support of Iowa Public Television. Funding for this program was provided by members of Friends of Iowa Public Television, 70,000 individuals and families helping Iowa Public Television inform, enlighten, and enrich your life. Join them.